Photoshop on the iPad includes only a fraction of the functions available on the desktop version. However, it has several advantages. Its intuitive, refined interface makes it easier to use, and working with an Apple Pencil allows you to be really precise when it comes to detailing, retouching, and painting. Thanks to cloud documents, your work is transferable between devices, and even the workflow I'm going to show you in this tutorial would work on both versions of Photoshop. Join me and learn how to combine two images together convincingly with the use of layer masks, adjustment layers, and filters. You can follow along by downloading the photos I'm working with by clicking on the links in the description below. First, we will start making a selection on this turtle, which will be quite simple with the subject select option. So let's just choose select subject. And it does a really good job on here. There might be a few details that we can refine, but I'm happy with this to start working because what we will do is instead of separating our selection from this image, we will just turn it into a mask to keep it non-destructive. So we will just click on the Japanese flag icon here on the right, which turns the selection into a mask. We can see our thumbnail here on the top right where the layer is and everything is ready. So we can actually copy the whole thing into another image which I'm going to do by going to the taskbar and choose copy layer. Then going back to the home screen, I will open up this other image that I had prepared and I am going to paste the layer in. And the best thing is that it comes already together with its layer mask. So if I make this smaller, we can see better what's happening. I'm also going to rotate the image around a bit. It gets slightly smaller. And I think around that size will work, maybe a little bit smaller. So the whole idea of this composition is to make this look like it's a giant flying turtle. So I'm going to press done. So now that it's all set up, first of all, we need to make sure that the colors match because of course the turtle was underwater. It looks a bit weird at the moment. We need to make it look like it's in the sun. So first I am going to use one of the adjustment layers and I think the best one to start with would be color balance. So let's select that one. It automatically creates the clipping, so it will only affect the layer of the turtle and not the background, which is perfect for us. So I'm going to increase the reds and also increase the yellows. And probably that's all we can do with this adjustment. But then let's add another adjustment layer. Don't forget, you have to always select the image which you want to affect and then choose again Add Clip Adjustment. And this time I'm going to use Hue Saturation. And with that, I am going to turn on Colorize, set the hue probably a little bit closer to these warm tones here on the left side. And I think the saturation and lightness is actually fine the way it is. But of course, this is a little bit overpowering. So I'm going to reduce the opacity to something around there. I think that looks quite nice. Now maybe one additional adjustment would help because now by using this latest one, the hue saturation, I feel like the details are getting a bit washed out. So we are losing a bit of contrast. And to make sure, again, it matches well the background, we need to also match the contrast, not just the colors. So I will again select the image layer, choose Add Clipped Adjustment, and then choose Levels. And to increase the contrast with levels, all we have to do is to drag up the black point and drag the white point down, something like that. Maybe a little bit more on the black point and it's starting to look really good. Now I can just go back to hue saturation and maybe increase the saturation a little bit there. Also, maybe we can go back to color balance and further adjust these colors. Maybe a little bit less yellow now and a little bit more red and also maybe just a little bit more magenta, something like that. So what I normally do is when I have multiple adjustment layers is to check each of them. So their effect, turning them off one by one and checking what I achieved with each of them. And you can see how important that levels adjustment was. One other thing that you can also check is what happens if you change the order of your adjustments. So putting levels on top of the other two adjustment layers makes a huge difference as you can see it, but I think it was 
better where it was originally. I actually prefer this setup. It works quite nicely and I think it almost looks perfect now. There's one last thing that I want to add here and that is the cast shadow. To make it really look like this turtle is flying or hovering above the beach, we need to create that nice cast shadow on the beach and on the water surface. So for this, what I'm going to do is to select the mask, which was created earlier on, and then go into the additional options in the taskbar and choose load as selection. Once we have that ready, we can create a new layer and I will put this layer above the beach's layer, but below the turtle's layer. So here I will generate that new layer and I will also rename this shadow. And then while I have this selection active, I'm going to use the eyedropper tool to pick a color from the background, something that's similar to the shadows of these trees. And then once we have the color ready, I will switch to the paint bucket tool and fill in the selection. Now we don't see it yet because it's under the turtle, but I'm going to tap deselect and use the move tool to be able to reveal the shadow that we created. So that looks great, but don't forget we need to set this layer to multiply to blend well with the background. So from the blend mode, we choose multiply and I will also probably reduce the opacity a bit, something like that. And then to emphasize the distance, I'm going to also add a Gaussian blur, so blur out the shadow. Further away the shadow gets from the objects, it's casting it, the more blurred out it looks. So for that, I'm going to use Gaussian blur and I will probably use around maybe 20 in this case. I think that looks good. We can increase it even further, but I think that it's going to work quite well. So I want to make sure it's still visible, but much more blurred out so I can now press done and I can just find a good place for it. Of course, we should also observe the current shadows in the background. So that should be our reference point. But in this case, I feel like if I put the shadow this way, might not work the best, but I quite like the way it looks on the water. So I'm just going to leave it here. And that's all I wanted to achieve with this composition. But most importantly, everything is set up completely non-destructively. And that means if I want to, I can go really close and refine my selection. So for example, if I select the mask that we had created with the select subject option, now we can check whether it is accurate or not. And I can see around the neck, it's not actually doing a perfect job. So we can refine that by going back to the mask itself and use the brush tool with white painting over this section here. And then I can use also the touch shortcut to temporarily switch to painting with black, with which I can remove these sections. And now once again, let's check the mask. Now it looks much better. And maybe around the head as well, we can refine it a bit more. So I'm just going to paint over this section here zoom more closer, holding down the touch shortcut and maybe making my brush size smaller just to allow me to work more accurately. I can refine these edges and there you go. That also looks better now. So that's why working non-destructively and especially using masks is so important since you don't have to refine your selections at the beginning, you can always do it at the very end once you are happy with your composition. So this can save you a lot of time and allow you to experiment with different compositions and only fiddle around with small details and time-consuming refinements once you are 100% sure that you're working with the right combination of images. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.